Good morning, our dear members of the Association of Major Religious Appears in the Philippines and our guests. And welcome to our first online AMRSP Joint Convention, April 2021. Good morning, Father Shello. Good morning, Sister Malen. Good morning to all who are virtually there with us. We are here now to share with you how our journey as AMRSP has been since we had our last face-to-face -face joint convention in Iloilo in July 2019. To do that, we first situate ourselves in our now moment, then ask, where have we been? To see the, the landmarks in our journey of the past one year and nine months. In looking back, we want to revisit this past 21 months, not merely for the sake of recalling events, but to see the past with new eyes, to glean the significance of the events in our ongoing response to where God may be leading us as we continually ask ourselves, where is the Lord calling us to go as AMRSP? As we look back to our journey, we invite you to take a similar revisiting of your own past 21 months. What was it like for us when we began our term? How did we experience the outer world of the Philippine society, the church, and the world in general? How did we experience the inner world of the AMRSP? This is an important aspect since the dynamics within AMRSP is what facilitates the AMRSP collective engagement with the different issues out there possible. If the generation before us use terms like pre-war, wartime, and peacetime to refer to the periods before, during, and after World War II, we have our own counterpart before COVID-19, during the pandemic, and God willing, post-COVID time. Before the COVID, AMRSP was involved in monthly solidarity masses held in different churches of AMRSP members. The three solidarity masses followed by the silent lighting of candles by the roadside. Toy banal na misa para sa katotohanan, katarungan, at kalayan. Resist in support of those who were accused by the government. AMRSP supported the CBCP's Episcopal Commission on Mutual Relations, First National Convention for Beakers for Religious. Beakers for clergy and representatives of associations of religious in dioceses by the way of logistics and resource persons. Held on November 2019 in Manresa Retreat House, this was the first of the pre COVID events which we engaged with. proved to be a most challenging year for the whole world. The Philippines, especially southern Luzon, was thrown into a crisis with the eruption of Taal Volcano in January 2020. And soon after, life was upended for all of us with the COVID-19 pandemic. Feeling the effects of climate change, the Philippines was battered by a series of super typhoons, and Mindanao had its earthquakes. From May to December 2020, the MRSP network consisting of the MRSP member congregations, the JPICC, and the mission partners shared and distributed 7,786 bags of dry goods consisting of rice, sachets of coffee, canned goods, noodles, and medicines to families in Metro Manila 
in the province of Rizal. Different member congregations of the MRSP also opened their convents, churches, kitchens, and schools from the start of the pandemic to the present, to the frontliners, to the homeless, the jobless, the lost, the hungry. These efforts continue till now. AMRSP also extended a sizable amount of financial assistance to 19 IP barangays in North Cotabato for their food and rehabilitation from August to September 2020 in partnership with the Franciscan Healthcare Crossing Borders Incorporated together with their barangay LGU. There were also the help in the food packs to areas hard hit by the super typhoons in northern Luzon, particularly in Cagayan and Isabela, and the provinces of Bicol, Catanduanes, Agusan, and Surigao. A generous donation from an American religious congregation of women to help in the rehabilitation of the victims of the Taal eruption was coursed through the MRSP. The MRSP entered into a collaborative efforts with the Diocese of Imos, Cavite, to assist a total of 80 families from Laurel, Batangas, whose homes were devastated by the 2020 Taal volcano eruption. The project is an opportunity to actualize the principles of synodality and Pope Francis' total sustainability plan in the process of providing the families with housing assistance and sustainable livelihood. In partnership with Santa Clara Paris of the OFMs in Nabotas and 15 families who lost one or more family members to the government's war on drugs, the AMRSP JPICC created circles of compassion using diary writing as a form of documentation to journal and capture their thoughts, struggles, faith, and aspirations. Monthly formation and training sessions are provided to the 15 members as part of the objective to capacitate the women in their desire to generate more income through their small businesses. During the past 21 months, AMRSP released 19 official statements denouncing unjust actions and legal decisions of government that shrink democratic space in the country, supporting persons and institutions unjustly accused, condemned, and red tagged. In response to the call to uphold human rights, especially of the vulnerable ones in the Church, AMRSP addressed the Vatican's priority issue of sexual abuse and human rights violation in the Church with a formation course for servant leaders on safeguarding children and vulnerable adults. The formation course offered hope to capacitate, eventually, all the association members to develop safeguarding policies to prevent human rights violations and mitigate clergy sexual abuse in religious, in religious congregations, in their ministries, and among AMRSP mission partners. The recently concluded three formation courses were attended by 152 religious and lay partners from the three regions in the Philippines. AMRSP also partnered with the Intercongregational Review Board, or ICRB, on investigative trainings on clergy sexual abuse. It mainstreamed the ICRB in the formation course for servant leaders, unsafe guarding children and vulnerable adults, and assisted in the preliminary investigation of alleged sexual abuse cases. The Mission Partners Convention on March 1 to 3, 2021, resulted in a 15-month campaign plan on human and environmental rights and governance in the context of the pandemic and the 2022 elections. This campaign plan was drafted together 
with the JPICC representatives and is in your dossier. Once the plans are finalized, the MRSP network the Congregational Members, Secretariat, Mission Partners, and the JPICC ideally can move as one body in addressing the pandemic, climate crisis, forthcoming 2022 elections, and safeguarding democracy. Integrated the appeal to MRSP to participate in the voters registration and voters education campaign for the 2022 elections coming from Sister Sonia Aldeger, RSCJ, Attorney Christian Monsud, former Chief Justice Sereno, while Senator Lisa Ontiveros urged us to continue to be actively vigilant in safeguarding our democratic institutions. The Talitacom Philippines of the JPICC participated in the two-month global campaign of the UISG Talitacom Rome and the Vatican on anti-trafficking and anti-slavery with the theme, Economy Without Human Trafficking. The global campaigns commemorate the International Day of Prayer and Awareness Against Human Trafficking, which is celebrated on the 8th of February. AMRSP JPICC celebrated the month-long season of creation with an outline posting on the MRSP Facebook page of personal reflections on how the religious and lay live out care for nature and the earth. AMRSP Media Ministry mainstreamed our advocacies and connected the AMRSP members through the social media platforms of Facebook and YouTube. The AMRSP Facebook page reached 12,000 followers and the YouTube videos elicited a combined total of 38,552 views and 906 subscribers. The AMRSP continues to feature different congregations in leading the Holy Rosary and hosting the Sunday Eucharistic celebrations through the different live stream productions of the AMRSP media team. The Joint Executive Board formally established AMRSP Media as a separate ministry to ensure the online presence of AMRSP in the varied social media platforms. During this period, the AMRSP media team also evolved the following thematic videos. Pasco Kaisa, Songs of Hope and Unity, featured 51 congregations gifting the virtual community with the joy of Christmas. Co bodies, lights and shadows, and new frontiers for consecrated men and women in connection with the World Day for Consecrated Life in February. It produced 29 episodes of The Habits, a weekly one hour talk show revolving around church news and opinions on key issues. When the pandemic started, we were still hopeful that we could hold the planned separate conventions in 2020. Instead, we had the first online General Assembly in September 30 to October 1. Even this year, we still hope that we could have the face-to-face -face joint convention, but to settle for the online version. I think this proves that we value the connectedness we have among the different groups of consecrated persons. Restructuring seems to be the theme of many of the undertakings within AMRSP. It certainly has meant for us endless consultations and meetings. In one of the early Joint Executive Board meetings, we found that we inherited a process concerning the Visa Desk, an office set up by AMRSP to help foreign missionaries with their visas. 
This inherited process meant numerous meetings with the CBCP's Episcopal Commission on Mutual Relations until we were able to transfer the Visa Desk Office to its current location in the Latran Dormitory Compound in Intramuros. Now we are literally walking distance to the Bureau of Immigrations. The transfer was not merely a change of address. Aside from incorporating the Visa Desk personnel into the AMRSP Secretariat, it also meant integrating the Visa Desk's financial and operation system with the AMRSP Secretariat, a task that is still ongoing. Our very able co-treasurers also initiated a comprehensive restructuring of the financial systems of the AMRSP for greater internal control. The ongoing work of finalizing the financial guidelines was what Sister Mirasol Navidad, RSCJ, Treasurer for the Association of Major Religious Superiors of Women for the Philippines, was still very busy with when she suddenly died last April 8. We share the loss of her person together with her sisters, the religious of the Sacred Heart. Even as the pandemic posed all kinds of challenges to our networking, opportunities to work for strengthened relations with the Church presented itself in the early pre-COVID part of our term. The Joint Executive Board had the privilege of paying a courtesy call to the previous Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop Gabriel Katya. During the pandemic, before the celebration of the World Day of Consecrated Life last February, we were graciously received by the new Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop Charles Brown. He accepted the invitation to preside over the Eucharistic celebration for the World Day of Consecrated Life held in Santo Domingo Church as a way of showing his desire to meet the different groups of consecrated persons in the Philippines. In reorganizing the AMRP structures, particularly with the integration of the Visa Desk Office, AMRSP defined clearer boundaries in our working relations with the CPCP's Episp Episcopal Commission on Mutual Relations. We pledge continual support for ECMR special projects like their regular national convention for vicars for religious, vicars for clergy, and representatives of the association of consecrated persons in the different dioceses, and the proposed annual encounter between the bishops and the major superiors. We only had one of each so far. There are plans for the celebration of AMRSP's 50th anniversary, as well as collaborating with the CBCP in the celebration of the 500th year of Christianization in the Philippines. As early as February 2020, the Joint Executive Board began discussions on the proposal to change the name of MRSP to reflect the more inclusive nature of this body. This was also brought up in the Online General Assembly last year. We are truly blessed that in the Joint Executive Board, we have our resident canon lawyer who worked in Chic El Sal for a number of years. Father Elias Ayuban Jr., CMF, Claritian Provincial Superior will walk with us through the rationale, the processes, and the implications of this change of name. He will also make some clarifications regarding the canonical status of the membership. In the midst of varied involvements, we remember the challenges around the core questions from our 2020 MRSP General Assembly. Who are we as church? in this time of the pandemic. At the beginning of our report, we mentioned that we are concerned with where is the Lord calling us to go as MRSP in the next 
50 years. Yes, we are celebrating our 50 years as a body and it comes with the sober knowledge of the weight of the responsibility of such a gift. We too can take the motto of the celebration of the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines as our own, gifted to give. How do we continue to respond to the repeated calls from our Lord to be prophetic, healing and compassionate companions of our suffering people and our suffering world? We now take a few minutes to be silent and pray for the millions of people around us, around the world, who are sick from the coronavirus. We also pray for all the millions whose already marginalized plight has been worsened by this pandemic. For the more than 3 million people who have died from the virus, especially for our relatives and members of our congregations who have passed away in the past months and entrust them to God's embrace. We remember to pray for all who amidst the, this confusion and chaos continue to persist with courage, faith, hope, and kindness as a church that walks with and listens to the grief and anguish of the poor. In these difficult times of fear, grief, and sorrow, we know the source of what keeps us going, and so we pray. O Savior Christ, in whose way of life lies the secret of all life and the hopes of all the people, we pray for quiet courage to meet this hour. We did not choose to be born or to live in such an age, but let its problems challenge us, its discoveries accelerate us, its injustice anger us, its possibilities inspire us, and its vigor renew us for your kingdom's sake. Amen.